turn the light on. Bro, I'm recording now, so like, don't say shit that's gonna get us canceled, okay? Okay. Okay. Or lower ratings. Yeah. So uh, you could just get all like the uh, cancelables out of the way. Just like say like every bad I'm word. I'm ready. Start. Okay, it's recording. So okay. your whining was officially recorded. Okay. That's okay. okay. Uh, welcome to episode two, you all. Um, we are live. This is episode number dos. Uh, and oh, Jesus Christ, I forgot what I was going to say. But thank you for tuning in. For those of you who are <laughs> survived past the first episode of me and Nihar talking uh, football most of the time and having a little side stories. But the question was cool. And I think the discussion was pretty productive last time. So I'm hoping for something similar this time. Um, for those of you who don't know, the question this week is, do you want to say the question? Is there still a divide between Indian and Pakistani? Is that the question? Yeah, in the United States. So it's like pretty obscure. So like for like those white people who like don't understand this, like feel free to like turn it off. But um but no, this is for, uh, I think this is for everyone. I think this is important. I think this will be a conversation that kind of digs a little deeper into our community um, as South Asians. And I think this is a conversation I've wanted to have for a long time. I've been talking to you about this for forever. Uh, right. I think we've also talked about this for a minute too. So uh, it should be fun. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to introduce my guest. This is Iman. Do you want to like talk about yourself or say something? Um, yeah, for sure. I'm Iman. Um, Anuja and I have been friends since high school, like most of the people that are going to be on this friends. podcast. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. He doesn't like to admit it, but he knows I'm his coolest friend, so it's okay. Uh, that's what they um, say. But yeah, I'm Pakistani and he's Indian, so I guess that's why I'm here today. <laughs> I'm probably one of the only That's why you're here today? You're like my token Pakistani friend. <laughs> yeah, dude. Every Pakistan topic. Oh yeah, dude, Iman's a, Iman's a gal. Yeah, she's the perfect person to be on this podcast because she's Pakistan. I also care a lot about it. I think you know that too. Psychology major. <laughs> you like want to talk about your major because like I think that has a lot to do with why I brought you on in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm a sociology major with a concentration in global politics. So there's that social and political aspect of you know the India and Pakistan conflict that we kind of want to talk about today. So. Yeah, so she's uh she's basically really smart and I <laughs> kind of stupid. So uh it should balance it out. Uh unlike last week where it was just uh both just, just stupid relatively <laughs> dumb people on the podcast talking at a very low IQ level at times. But we won't be talking football this week unless unless I have to say one thing, one thing really quickly. This message is directed at Nihar. So those of you who did listen last week know why where this is where this is going nihar predicted that the new england patriots would beat the san francisco 49ers iman knows nothing about football so like those of you who are like watching the video version of this she's like i have no clue what to say i'm not gonna say anything she won't say anything um but the new england patriots did lose to the san francisco 49ers cam newton looked like he got COVID again because our defense literally just beat the crap out of him we were the superior team so to nihar if you're listening to this fuck you you lost I won, my team's four and three, your team's two and four, and isn't going to make the playoffs. So, one time for the one time, suck it. Okay, I'm done with football for now. Uh, Okay, so, I just, on this episode, uh, obviously, as Iman was saying earlier, I got completely sidetracked with that. Uh, We're talking about the divide between uh, South Asian communities. So, like, between India and Pakistan, and I don't really want to just, like, relegate it or like pigeonhole into just india and pakistan like we could talk about like other things like there's also other countries in south asia fun fact like nepal and uh and is okay this is a question i've always had this is a, this is a question i've always had hold on do you, is afghanistan a part of south asia technically yeah like i think it falls under south asia even though people consider south asia like the countries that actually partitioned or are more on like the south asian side but technically afghanistan does fall under south asia afghanistan saying <laughs> hello white not nah, it's afghanistan, afghanistan. <laughs> no but um no i've always had that question because like i've had so many people be like dude afghanistan's the middle east bro and i'm like but is it i feel like it 
I feel like Afghani culture, from what I've been exposed to, is very similar to like South Asian culture. Not it's it's more similar yeah. to South Asian culture than it is Middle Eastern culture. But I mean, they speak Farsi though, so I don't know about that. I heard they speak a little Urdu down in Afghanistan too, right? They speak Pashto on like the border, like Pakistanis and ah, but yeah, um, there's so many different like with these things. There's so many different ethnic groups. It's Dude, it's, true. Sure, like. it's pretty crazy i mean like if you i feel like when you are like indian like i'm just speaking from my perspective but like when i'm like because i feel like in india like as as someone who is an indian american like you are aware of the fact that like holy shit there's like literally what 25 plus different languages within our subcontinent so it's like when like someone comes up to you and is like dude you speak hindi it's like bro like it's not necessarily like a, I, there's no like universal language, even though Hindi is considered the the quote unquote like you know language of whatever, right? Like language of the country. So I found I find that super interesting. And like, what's crazy is like the the languages, the different languages are like divided into different subgroups. You know what I mean? Like, there's like the Dravidian languages, and there's like in North India. If you go up to North India, there's like you know Hindi and like Urdu are like relatively Punjabi. closely related. Punjabi. I've heard Punjabi is nothing like Hindi though. Oh yeah, no. It. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I think if you speak Hindi or Urdu, you can probably understand some parts of Punjabi, but it, a lot of it is different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because my mom's fluent in Hindi, and I think she's working on her Urdu. She's been watching a lot of the. Uh, the uh, Pakistani TV shows. Oh recently. my god! So she's like, you, you know, she's like Pakistan trying to like, <laughs> she's trying to warm up, dude. She's been watching a lot now. I think she's watching Hindi shows now. But, is, she, is she watching Humsafer? That's like the finish best. that. Finish that like oh, a year god. ago, bro. Dude, Humsafer is like the best. Dude, okay, I can't personally recommend it. Bro, um, it, that shit made me want to fall in love, bro. That was. That was <laughs> <laughs> okay it's like, like I, South I asian love story south asia dude for those of you, okay we're just gonna do a little quick tangent i know we've done like five already but bollywood movies dude goaded okay they're pretty good like honestly i because i'm someone who like was a hater of bollywood movies for a very long time and you know this in high school i was like ew dude bollywood movies are gross like blah, blah, blah. You had an identity crisis you were yeah like, it was part of that whole identity crisis and i'm sure we could like get into that whole thing later that's like a whole separate thing but like honestly like i've come around on bollywood movies bro like some of them are really good i mean obviously like i'm pretty i'm like a relatively like basic bitch quote unquote when it comes to like you know bollywood movies like i don't know like the the, the depths of the bollywood mo- film catalog but like i know like a few and like i've actually really enjoyed the last few that i've watched even though like i don't tend to like do you watch more bollywood or hollywood movies i'm just curious mm, it depends i feel like lately there haven't been very good bollywood movies but true, every true. every now and then there's a movie like zindagi na milgi dubara and you're like i'm hooked like <laughs> That's yeah, dude. It life. was that. I've watched the Nicki Minaj at the bar. I've also watched Ye Giovanni, Hey Divani because oh, my brother is like a huge good. Deepika Padukone fan. So, mm-hmm. literally every like we've watched that movie at like twenty plus times. We also have it on DVD, um, and he'll also like rewind through the songs. So like I've literally listened to those songs thousands and thousands of times. Right. But they're amazing. They're really good songs. Um, but yeah. All right, but hold up, hold up. Like, yeah. let's let's talk about what we're here to talk about. Okay. Okay, let's talk about what we're here to talk about. We're not here to talk about Bollywood But clearly, there doesn't time. seem to be a very big of a divide if we're here talking about this stuff, right? Hey, maybe. Okay, end of conversation. Bye. Um, <laughs> nah. But I think the first thing, if you're really going to, like, examine, like, does does this divide, like, exist, like, between South Asians in the United States? And I'm talking more so our generation. Uh, I think you got to start from, like, the historical background, right? Obviously. Uh, and I can't sit here and say that I'm some like professor on Indian history. I'm not, I don't know a lot. I do know the bare minimums of what my mother taught me and also a few Google searches and Wikipedia. Um, but we have global politics over here, so she'll help us. Um, (laughs) but, uh, yeah. So, I mean, from what I like read up, I feel like the divide, like, and this is, from what I've read up and also just like me inferring and drawing conclusions, it's the divide isn't necessarily like stemming from so much of like, you're from India, I'm from Pakistan, but more so of like a religion thing. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm Hindu, you're Muslim, 
you suck and then vice versa. Right. So I feel like that's more so where the divide stems from. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think it used to be more religious and now I think it's just cultural. Like everybody's trying to one up each other. Like if I'm being honest, like, you know, I, I was telling you earlier, like the other day I was talking to my mom and you know, we were trying to figure out who made nuclear weapons first. And she was like, no, 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 it was Pakistan. And I was like, I'm a hundred percent sure it was India, but Pakistan does have more nuclear weapons if that's what you're going to say. But it's just like, both sides like do not even care they just they want to be the first people to do something yeah and i can i can firmly say that like i've had i've had i haven't had that exact conversation with my parents but like with my mom in particular like we've had very similar conversations like oh india was the first one to do that it's like are you sure about that like i don't know you know and like my mom was like oh no no india india obviously and it's just like i feel like it's also like if you think about it from our parents perspective which is the next point i was going to bring up it's this whole idea that their parents, right? So independence took place in 47, 1947. And that wasn't necessarily their generation. I think our parents were what, born 60s, 70s, that type time frame. So a lot of their parents, though, were like, I, I wouldn't say our age, probably like mid 20s, like early 30s, when freedom, like when independence happened. So it was like, a huge deal for them it was obviously something that like defined a generation of i would say indians and pakistanis right and those people went on to have children and i feel like those values that i mean that would be our grandparents had were definitely like instilled and drilled down into our parents like what do you what do you think oh yeah a hundred percent and i i think like conflict between the two nations never really ended and you know, like one thing like that I was also thinking about was just the transfer of different industries like between India and Pakistan, because, you know, India and Pakistan at one point, they were still like bilaterally like trading and stuff like that. Um, So they couldn't exactly completely be on bad terms because they kind of depended on each other. Also for things like singers, that was a huge one, right? Like, but my parents, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree that they had like those negative views of the other like instilled in them because there was still like a lot of love even like in my generation when I was growing up because I was born in Pakistan like I saw it like there was a lot of love for India too like a lot of love for Indian culture and like people and I think like everybody just got kind of caught in the crossfire when it came to politics right right so I think culturally though like it's different when I came to America though Because when I came to America as a Muslim, a lot of Indians were like, we don't identify with them. But I always identified with Indians. So it was like a kind of that identity crisis, like, you know? Like a reverse identity crisis in a lot of ways, right? Where it was like, I come to like America and like expecting everyone to like, kind of be like, oh, we're all South Asians. Like we're in this together, brothers in arms. But it's not like that. Yeah, yeah, Right? I also kind of feel like that, that, this issue more so like brings like it was amplified by like where we grew up I know you didn't grow up in the bay as long as I did but like I mean I don't know how it was like growing up in Irvine I don't know like what the community was like down there for for Pakistanis or for South Asians in general but I can speak for like up here in the bay particularly the South Bay it's very it's it's, I'm not going to say like it's a very divided community, but I, I, there is a lot of division. And I think you can, you can speak to that as well. I mean, even at like our high school, man, like it was weird. It, Cause like, I still remember like, you know, probably sophomore, junior year, like one of our uh, good friends is Pakistani and we had like an Indian dance show every year. And, um, and like we, and he would hang out with us and he was like, he was one of our good friends. Like he was just like one of the guys. And, like, I still remember, like, during, like, the the whole, like, you know, festival and all that, it was just, like, we would get, like, I, I would see, like, when, when we'd hang out with him and stuff like that, like, you could see, like, some of the parents kind of, like, whispering to each other, like, like, that's so, like, blah, blah, blah. It's, like, obviously, I don't know exactly what they were saying, but there were a lot of, like, dirty looks and, like, little snide things and, like, little passive-aggressive comments, and I was, like, bro, like, what the fuck, like, just leave us alone we're children like let us be us and like I don't know if you've experienced something similar because we did go to the same high school but I mean yeah like I'm curious to hear what you have to say honestly like 
I never really felt like I was in, in like the Indian crowd, like even with the girls and like even more probably with the guys. Like I had individual Indian friends like you and like, you know, some others at our high school, but like I never did BNB. And I think I did join once and then like I just dropped out. <laughs> like, yeah. And I remember like, I, I remember thinking like that was actually a good decision on my part because it was such like a, if I'm being honest, like a Brahmin ass, like, you know, like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and like, that's not, that's not a bad thing to say. You know what I mean? Like it's, and I think that goes to show like the division. I think a lot of it has to do with just numbers. You look at like numbers within even the Bay Area. I'm not even talking Saratoga. I'm not talking, you know, the South Bay. You look at the Bay Area numbers. I think, I mean, obviously I don't have them up right in front of me, but Indians just overpower Pakistanis in terms of just sheer like numbers, right? Oh, yeah. Like Pakistani, there's, there's probably like what? I would say like 10 to one in terms of like 10 Indians to like one Pakistani or even more maybe. I don't even know. But right. like it's crazy. It's and it's just like Pakistanis are such a minority within our particular like within like the minority of South Asians. And it's like and I feel like everyone's just like, oh, like that like everyone's Indian, you know, like that's that is what it is. And like that's kind of like what the American point of view is. But like, you know, there is obviously different cultures and and uh it's weird. Like I have never thought of like, cause I was always Indian. So it was just like, Oh, like I fit in with the crowd, you know, like everyone's Brown, like a hey, Brown town gang. Right. Like that's just the way it is. And like, that's the way we grew up. But like thinking about it on like the opposite end of the spectrum, it's like, yo, I'm Pakistani. And like everyone, all like my white friends think I'm Brown, but like, I'm also like, you know, a, such a minority, you know, like within the Brown community and like, I'm looked down upon. And that's just such an interesting perspective. Like that's such an interesting thing to think about. Like now that I think about yeah. it more. Yeah, and, like, you know, honestly, like, for me, it was less so in high school than it was in college, because I, you know, I go to Cal Poly, and it's, like, already a predominantly white institution. I mean, you get it, too, because when you were, you know, yeah. um, at Redlands, it was just, like, something that was prevalent, and at our school, we only had an ISA, like, we, there was only an Indian Student Association, and I remember having a conversation with somebody who used to be on the board, and I was, like, why do they call it Indian Student Association? There's already so few of us. Why not call it like SASA, South Asian Student Association, you know? Right. And like, I, I, I never told you this, but I actually ended up writing them a huge letter. And I was no, like- No, you told me this, bro. Oh, I did? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You told me about the letter. I remember you were like super, I, 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 you've like FaceTimed me. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. I wrote them a letter and I was like, you know, like you're discounting like all of these minority cultures and like languages, even within India like not to mention South Asia. True. Like I remember I went with like one of my Nepalese friends and we felt so left out. We had to do introductions. I stood up there. I told them I was Pakistani and the second I did that, it was over. Like, <laughs> it was over. <laughs> I, I feel like that's me. just like the way, that's unfortunately like the way people look at you. It's so like, it's just, I don't like, obviously I can't speak for it because I feel like I'm in the majority within the minority of South Asia. So like, oh, I'm Indian. Everyone's like, oh yeah, dude, for sure. But like, I can speak to this whole idea of like North versus South, you know, where like, that's a huge thing. And like South Indians in particular, like, I feel like we're such, um, like we're, we, there's like less of us within America. And also I feel like less South Indians in the Bay that I've seen, even though like my, like I was raised around a lot of South Indians and North Indians equally. But, like, if you do look at, like, a lot of our, like, friends in high school, a lot of them are North Indian. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of them really? are. Really? I thought a lot of them were, like, Telugu and stuff. I mean, I mean, I'm, like, trying to think. I mean, like, I was talking to another friend of mine, right? And uh, he was telling me, he was, like, yo, like, I mean, you're, you and, like, a couple other people are, like, the only, you meaning me, uh, are, are, like, a couple of, like, I would say, like, he said, like, you guys are, like, the only South Asians that, like, I really no or like south indians not south asian but south indians that like i really know and i was like really like i feel like there was more of us but like he was like dude like if you look at just like the numbers like think about like all our like think about all your friends and it's just like if you do look at it i, I do think that like south indians were definitely like less i feel like in the bay area i don't know if that's like the south indians are the sweetest literally i'm yet to meet a, like a nice north indian person Except okay for, okay let's not let me, generalize <laughs> indian people okay let me shout out shivani agarwal <laughs> <laughs> only nice north indian whoa 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 i'm not gonna i'm, I'm not condoning this uh, <laughs> this message okay i believe all indians are cool but I do think that there is stereotypes that go around within like the North Indians and the South Indians, you know, like, our, like 
talk to my parents who are very, very South Indian, very rooted in Bangalore, India. And they're like, dude, these North Indians, bro, they like, you know, they talk weird language, like they talk Hindi, like they eat they, they have like the funniest stereotypes about each other you know it's like they oh, eat this. meat like they <laughs> meet, like they're this they're that they're loud they do this like they're not as religious as us they're not as devout and like you talk to north indians they're like bruh south indians are just dark they're rude they smell bad it's like dude like oh my god it's so like it's just like bro aren't we all indian at the end of the day like why does this shit matter and like i personally like I can't say that I've like experienced colorism in the United States. Like I, I personally have it. I'm not that dark, you know, I'm a perfect milk chocolate in my opinion, but like, it's just like, it's so like crazy to me that like, that's, that's an issue. Like, and like, you know, that whole TikTok North Indian, South Indian war, that's some yeah. bullshit, dude. Like, what like aren't we all like i mean there's like and this is like yeah with the sound and everything and this was like my whole thing with that whole situation i was like dude there's literally four million of us in this country four million that's like less than one percent why the fuck do we gotta divide ourselves into these different groups when there's so little of us in the first place like because we're inherently taught to be divided like that's just yeah what we've learned you know find the difference between you and yeah, exactly. we're taught to be divided. And I agree with that, you know, because like we like I can say like I mean I, I also say there's like a lot of variety of examples in terms of just like it within like the South Asian community of like, you know, like I'll give you one example of like, oh, like there's like in, in the Bay Area, obviously there's a lot of like Indian Pakistani restaurants. You know this, we all know this. Shout out Zareen's, it's very good. Oh, yeah, tried it. So good. Um, but like Dude, like, I've had so many, like, I've heard of so many, like, Indian aunties being like, oh, like, we don't eat Indian Pakistani food. I'm like, the fuck? Like, why? (laughs) Like, what's your issue, dude? And it's like, there's like that, and there's all like, oh, Pakistani, like, they cook meat. Like, we don't eat halal meat. And it's like, bruh. What is your? That's interesting. Like, that's interesting because I've know, had like yeah, I've had so many people like I've heard of so many people, and I've like I've also seen people like really talk shit on halal meat in terms of like me being a Hindu and like being with other Indian people. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. that's an interesting one. I never. I think I asked you like for the first time like two months ago. I was like, "What's halal?" <laughs> like I was. So- Dude, honestly, that meat is like less stress. Basically, like <laughs> you just exactly. let like the only difference is basically like because honestly, a lot of people I bet have this question. It's basically just let the blood drain from the animal before you like like you just don't eat the blood, which is like honestly, it's a fair thing. <laughs> like. Yeah. I think I don't think you're supposed to be having that much blood. So I wanted to ask you this question real quick. So I know there's like a lot of obviously like we talked about this like regional divides within India, you know, between like North India and South India. Is there something similar in Pakistan? Like, is there divides? Oh, a hundred percent. And like people think like, oh, Pakistan is such a happy nation. Only Muslims are there. We have Hindus. We have Shias. We have so many like different types of um, like sects of Islam as well. It's like. I don't, we have Christians too, you know, it's not like that. And right. even though we're an Islamic state, I would like to think that we're a little more progressive than some of the other like Middle Eastern like states like Iran right now and stuff like that. Um, especially like with our prime minister and stuff like that. He really did a lot, you know, like um, I think the people really needed a prime minister like that because he was like opening Pakistan up to tourism and things like that and just changing our status in like the global like pers- and the global like perspective of us right um that wasn't your question though your question was no you i was just saying that? like you know how like in india like when there's like oh like you're punjabi oh you're kind oh, uh-huh. oh you're telugu like do you have that in pakistan yeah there's like marrying outside of your caste stuff like that like one of my cousins she just got like engaged and i think she's but I feel like that's caste system. That's not necessarily like states. You know what I mean? Like. Oh well, yeah, like. But the thing is, it kind of is. At least right. like. Okay. Like Punjab is separate from like Sindh. Is separate from like Balochistan. Is separate from you know like all that. Yeah. Stuff. Like, is it like? Have you ever had like, like oh like he's from Lahore and then like she's from Karachi and like that's like ugh like we don't fuck with Lahore people or like shit like that. You know what I mean? Like not that type of thing. Literally Lahore to Karachi because the Lahore Karachi Islamabad are like three of the most like 
Yeah. Those are the, I mean, I just listed two of the most populous cities. in the world. Right, right. And there's yeah. so many, like, and that's where all like, the industry is and like the media and stuff like that. Whereas there's other like um, areas of Pakistan that are more like rural, like, especially in the north with like, you know, Hunza people, um, Chitralis, things like that. So, I mean, I'm sure like, I, I mean, I can't speak to all of those because um, there's so many different ethnic groups. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, I was just saying, like, do you know of, like, any divides? Or... Oh, 100%. And there's also so much colorism, too. Like, you know, just because you create, like, a physical border between, like, a nation of people doesn't mean a lot of their old habits change. And especially, like, you know, I was literally learning about this in one of my, like, sociology classes. It was just that there's also the case of, you know how there's, like, Anglo-Indians? Mm -hmm. in, yeah. yeah in, like, Fox on and stuff. Yeah. That in itself, like, basically the wider you are, the richer you are like that's so unfair and that's so like like we're just inherently like colonialism is still very much in our veins and we still want to be the whitest you know to have the most money to have the most prestige to dress like you know um british people or any like white people right like that's right. still very much like why do we wear suits like, in pakistan people still go to work they wear suits they wear, why don't they wear their traditional clothing you know it's just a question that needs to be asked Mm -hmm. that's interesting i've never really thought about it that way it's like i feel like we take like western clothing for such like we're like oh that's societal norm you know what i mean like that's just that's what everybody does but like if colonialism almost like didn't happen and these like white majority countries didn't take over south asia or even just like other parts of the country like world like what the fuck would we all be wearing like that's that's kind of insane yeah. to think about that's kind of a trip yeah like, and yeah yeah it's like I mean, Indian people would be wearing, obviously, like, kurtas and, you know, saris and then salwars for the Pakistani people. And, like, there's just different stuff. Like, mm -hmm. and, I mean, like, who knows? Like, it, everything is just, that's so weird. I'd never have thought about it that way. Mm -hmm, exactly. Like, and you would all be wearing at, different things. Like, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. And if you look at, like, UN meetings and stuff like that, Anuj, like, I'm pretty sure there was maybe, like, I saw a picture of like a UN meeting and there was like one lady, I think from like an African country who was wearing her traditional clothing. Everybody else was in suits. Right. Yeah. No, that's crazy, dude. That's it's that's like another thing about like colonialism is what you don't realize is just like how much culture it's taken away. Like it's like if you look at the world and like just different areas, there's so many like different you know just uh like different little cultural things you know like different holidays different like celebrations different customs and like all of these things and like colonialism has basically taken that and it's just whitewashed everything and it's been like okay like we're gonna institute like our kind of set rules and it's taken away from i would say like colonialism to an extent has definitely taken away from like diversity of of nation diversity of the world like yeah Mm -hmm. it's, it's like crazy. the new world order basically mm -hmm. like, dude, I'm <laughs> you know? here. um yeah like that's it's really it's really sad and yeah. i i think it goes to show you know I, I like to make this joke um you know the british stole all our spices but they didn't learn how to use them <laughs> and, <laughs> and like, and like it, it's I think sad. my mom would agree with you <laughs> <laughs> For real, for real. Yeah. And they always say like, oh, like Indians are so smelly, Pakistanis are so smelly, but it's like our food is just ten times better than your food will ever be. True, bro. Dude, no. people see this say this all the time. Like, oh my gosh, dude, Indian food's a little too spicy for me. I'm like, bro, don't sleep on Indian food. Indian food is fantastic, bro. It's it's like it's so good because I mean, there's so many different variations of it too, right? Because north, south east west i mean even pakistani food i'm sure there's different variations of it as well i mean i think i've always said that we've like we've had like some of the best food you know even though i do get on my dad sometimes for making you know dosas a lot like i'm like dude and at the end of the day like would i rather have dosas or lasagna every day for dinner and it's like dude honestly dosas are kind of better than lasagna like if bro you, you still gotta invite me to have some of those spicy at least though dude maybe maybe <laughs> I will. I I don't know if my does she make spicy. I, she makes the fried at least. I don't know if she makes spicy at least. Um, but yeah, that's South Indian food is very different from North Indian food too. I mean, I think that's a lot. Another thing a lot of people don't know is like with dosa and like 
sambar and you know idli and chutney and vada and like all of these things are so so different from like what you're used to seeing in like indian restaurants and like that's another thing i've also noticed you know like when you think about it like when you go to an indian restaurant right like what what do you expect to get right you expect naan you know butter chicken paneer like uh, alu gobi like all of these things that are very very north indian you don't necessarily expect you, no one really knows about masala those unless you live in like a very like metropolitan area where there is a concentration of south indians you know what i mean i didn't even know about at least till my senior year of high school isn't there that sad <laughs> that is sad? very sad <laughs> and they're good i had a okay i had a really bland one though i have to say <laughs> bland idlis dude i mean yeah at least can get bland at least can get bland you just have to eat them with like chutney or sambar that's like when it tastes good like you can't just eat them raw you know what i mean <laughs> like if you eat them raw like they suck like honestly you have to eat them with the you have to have chutney you have to have sambar or or you eat rava idli rava idli is best dude bomb, bomb. yeah that's the one that they have like nuts and there's like my mom will, my dad will butcher me or like kill me for this fucking explanation of rava at least. It's, I mean, but they have like nuts in it and there's, gosh, I think there's like cumin or some sort of spice as well. It's, it's, it's much more like flavorful than a regular Italy. Anyway, enough about Italy's. Wait, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the partition. Because, Go for it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, you were talking about or you didn't bring this up, but I remember you talking to me about how, like, your parents kind of had a perspective on it, you yeah. know. So you want to talk about that? Yeah, let's do it. You start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, well, my, like, uh, mostly I've talked about it with my dad, like, but as far as I know, I don't think there was anybody that we knew super close in our family that passed away, like, in the whole conflict and stuff like that but I know for sure that I have family in India that I don't know about that are there and that's like one of my bucket list things I want to go find them even if they don't want to see me I want to try um and it's funny I say that because they wouldn't want to like talk to me or something it's just because I have I know nothing about them and I wouldn't go see them alone either because they're still strangers it's weird to say that about family but that is um, weird Uh, are they like in north india like somewhere yeah or? yeah so like okay so my mom's side was from bareilly and my dad's side was from Kanpur. so that's pretty like central north i would okay. say um i don't and- know my indian geography so for my <laughs> uh, other viewers i'm i truthfully apologize i know that i'm not even from india <laughs> wow okay all I really know, honestly, India is such a like big place. All I know is like where Delhi is. I know where Bangalore is. I know where Chennai is. I know where uh, what else? The big ones. Kerala, yeah. Kerala. I know Kerala is like the the like Trivandrum is like the last city on like at like the end of India. You have um, to know Mumbai though. Mumbai is very, but Mumbai is also very central. You know what I mean? It's like right, right yeah. by the sea. It's like Isn't right. Isn't it kind of coastal though? It, yeah, it is. It's like, but it's central. It's like on the set, like if you're drawing out India, right, as like a subcontinent, it's like on that little coastline. Like, it's like right there. Yeah. So it's like, everyone knows where Mumbai is. But I mean, in terms of like Indian geography, yeah, my knowledge is very poor. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, when my dad talked to me about it, one of the first things that he talked to me about was just the image in his father and his mother's mind that they kind of passed down, which was just that when all of this was happening, there was so much death. Like people were literally like attacking each other in their homes and like killing each other. And like, it was so sad. And my, my grandpa like saw, like, if you would look at like, there was like dirt and trees, like the blood, all of the blood would just soak into the roots almost and like be sucked up into the trees. And like, that's the image that they remember is like red trees yeah. from all of that. Right. And like, that's, that's a devastating image, you know? Yeah, of course. And I mean, that's like such a thing that I feel like, I mean, the partition is, is something that like, whether we like it or not, like defined 
I mean, our parents, it had also like defined our grandparents as well, you know, because like this is, I mean, I don't like, obviously there were certain communities that weren't as affected by the partition, you know what I mean? Because it like, it really depended on like where you were kind of thing. But I think everyone was affected by independence in some way, shape or form, you know, like that's a, that's an event, like you're not necessarily going to forget. And I think like with that, like traumatic image in mind, like you were saying, like about your grandparents and like my, I know like my mom has told me several stories about the partition, not nothing that like personally happened with us. I feel like uh, she's at least told me that like no one in our like particular family has like passed on or like was affected you know, in any detrimental way by it. But there was a lot of like, I feel like there was almost a lot of like hatred and not hatred, but like there was a lot of like negative narrative spread about Muslim people, like particularly within my Hindu family. It was a lot of like, oh, like they are, you know, like, and like, if you talk like to other people too, like, you know, we have like family and friends and stuff that have gone through like the, the whole you know partition thing and like they have crazy stories too where like there was a lot of hindus living in pakistan at the time and like they had to like because they were afraid for their lives so they literally like fleed their houses like barely packed anything and just like just like took off and like you know on the luckily they were like able to afford a flight so they were just like took off and just you know landed in india with like three suitcases literally and like mm -hmm. nothing you know so there and like and i feel like that's the image in like my family friends' minds, and I also, I, I kind of get where they're coming from, you know, with that whole negative, like, Muslim narrative, where it's like, oh, like, we don't, you know, like, or like, the, it's not we don't like Muslims, but it's like, you know, like, they, like, that's what happened, and like, that's, like, they left their home, because, you know, there, there was this danger of violence, and like, I feel like that's kind of where they're coming from, but I'm interested to, like, hear your side of it. I mean, yeah, you know, it's like psychology 101, right, like, when somebody hates you, you have to make sense of that in your mind. You have to mm -hmm. find a reason to almost justify your hatred towards them. And I think there was a lot of um, false justification going on on both ends. Like, and if you really think about it, if the biggest deal was really just that, you know, we had different beliefs and like one of us ate meat, one of us didn't. Like, no, I mean, happened. if you break it down to a fundamental level, it makes no sense why it, yeah, yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> um but, oh no go ahead i think everybody was afraid of ethnic cleansing i think to some degree hindus were afraid there would eventually be a muslim majority or something and mm -hmm. you know muslims were afraid for themselves as a minority um and also like you know everybody talks about muslims what about the six what about what happened with the six you know True. Like, like, sick genocide and like I feel like in, in like the India religious, crazy complicated, and like, we're not even getting into the intricacies of this. Like India religious politics is one of the most complicated things like you'll ever see. And like, I'm talking like South Asian, re like religious politics is crazy complicated. Right, right. And then there's just Nepal up there chilling. Like we were never. Yeah, we were a part of this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we have Mount Everest, but we, we weren't a part yeah. of y'all. I mean, and like, it's crazy because, like, I, I feel like almost the six were, like, caught in the middle of this, like, crazy, like, bah, like, Hindu-Muslim war. And, like, the six were just, like, I mean, we exist, too. And, like, obviously, you know, the and genocide. They didn't get their own land. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously, the genocide, what happened, uh, I think the 80s? Was that the Golden yeah, Temple Massacre? Like, I think was the 80s. I'm, I'm not really sure on the date, but that was, like, I mean, I feel like that came sometime later, but I feel like being sick in india was probably so like complicated because it was just like i have these two other like religious you know powerhouses almost like clashing into each other yeah. and then i'm just like you know supposed to chill in the middle <laughs> like and yeah, <laughs> yeah it I, it was weird for sure you and, know like, it's funny Muslims they get forgotten politics. about what's up yeah exactly they got forgotten about you right yeah. and i was just saying um and jane's too bro Oh yeah, but that's like such a minority. Like, I, like I, I don't understand. Like, I don't even. I've not really looked into like what Jainism is. Like, I, I don't know what like it, the religion hmm. is or like any of that. I mean, but I and know they do about, exist. Um, sorry to interrupt you. You yeah. know about uh, like East and West Pakistan, right? Like before. Yeah, like Bangladesh and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was just like a divide and conquer situation. I really don't think a lot of like. Hindus at least were ready to like let go of like that land 
and also that almost ownership of Muslims. And I don't know if that's the right word, but I think to some degree they liked being the dominant, you know, like, I don't like what, you know, empire for like would give up that much land, you know, unless they really needed to, which is, I, you know. I mean, I feel like, you know, like being, like, I feel like a lot of like the, if you think about like, if I'm looking back on like my historical knowledge, like, I feel like a lot of the violence definitely took place, took place more in like Bangladesh than anything, like more so than Pakistan and India. It was more so like Bangladesh, Bangladesh, there was that whole situation was absolutely crazy. And I think you still see Bangladesh like reeling from the effects of it today. Like if you look at it, it's significantly poorer than all the other South Asian countries. I believe so. Right. Um, Or at least one of the poorest in South Asia. I mean, you look at just how, I mean, it's very, it's a very depleted country. It's, Mm. It's way more sweatshops. Remember? A lot, a shit ton of sweatshops. I feel like, I feel like, even though colonialism left them, it almost hasn't in a way. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. these Western countries are taking advantage of, you know, are outsourcing it for cheaper labor to these poor, like Bangladeshi workers who literally are depending on this for their income. And sociology one hundred and one. <laughs> and it's just, it's like a it's like a negative feedback loop. You know what I'm saying? And like, it's going back to what you were saying earlier about being psychology 101. It's just, it's, it's just very sad to see that it's yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a realist. I do think that in society there are winners and losers and there's these bigger systems working against us that we can't really control. And Mm -hmm. if we try to control them, first of all, no one's going to listen to us or we'll end up dead somewhere. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But, um, but I, I do think that there are other institutions that are trying to help with that, right? Like I, but like, it's a fair point, right? Like we, we were never really given a chance to start out on like the same level. So. Yeah. And I mean, if you think about who started the partition, it was Mountbatten, who was a British viceroy. So like, even this whole conflict that is you know, obviously we're talking about the repercussions of that conflict here in the United States, mostly, but I mean, I think it's important to have the historical context. I mean, when Mountbatten divided India, Pakistan, you know, into the West Pakistan and then the East Pakistan, it's, I mean, he was doing it, I'm not going to say Mountbatten was doing it out of self-interest, but Mountbatten almost had like, he, he wasn't necessarily like knowledgeable about the region. You know what I mean? It was more so like, oh, this is easy. I'm going to cut here and here and let's see what happens. And then the whole Kashmir thing. I mean, if you want to get into that, that's a whole separate, you know. Yeah. I think it was a very rushed process. Like, yeah. For sure. And, um, you know, it's funny, like, this is so not related, but I'm still going to bring it up. So our, like, the Muslim people's leader or whatever, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, Qaeda mm-hmm. Azim, what we call him, um, he wasn't even, like, a Sunni Muslim. You know that? And he did so much for Sunni Muslims. And, that is very interesting. Yeah, and so it really makes me think about like, okay, well, like, you know, these minorities are so, he was what they call, you know, what Aga Khan is, you know, like Prince Aga Khan or whatever. They No clue. You're going to have to educate. Honestly, me. I don't even completely understand it, but he's just this rich guy and his whole family lives in London. But there's there's a whole group of people that worship them for some reason. Okay. You know, um, not exactly. And was he a part of that family or something? No, he wasn't. It, it's just like, there's like a whole group of like Aga Khanis, like they are mm-hmm. like and right. you know, all these different like so-called sects of Islam. But a lot, this is the thing, a lot of Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims don't consider them Muslim because they think they're too far off from like Islam's teachings or whatever, which is- Are they like the more progressive Muslims considered no, to be? No, not progressive. I wouldn't say progressive. It's just different. Like, right. like the belief system, like, you know how we have certain prophets, they might not believe in some of the prophets. Or right. Little things and then people make big deals about them. I mean, it's crazy to think about, right? Like when you break down religion, it's- the like there's your fundamental base religion right like christianity like has the bible right it's a base bible but when you break it down into the different sects like catholicism and anglicanism and all and like presbyterians mormons all of these different things it's just all different interpretations of that base text like if you think about it right and it's like mormons take the bible and they're like okay like we agree with this but we think there was another you know 
I don't necessarily like understand the whole of like Mormonism. So like, don't catch me if I'm like wrong, but I, I feel like what they said was like, there was another prophet that descended, which who was Joseph Smith or Brigham Young. I can't remember, but one of those two who like descended upon earth and like, that's why they were, they worshiped him. Right. Cause they thought he was the prophet. Right. And I mean, and so like he, and it's literally like a difference between a prophet has caused so much divide and war mm. between yeah. countries, between every, between religions, like it's caused so much death. And it's a, if you think about it, it's a prophet. It's one prophet. Right. In like the, in like the grand scheme of things, like does that something just doesn't add up. You know what I mean? It's like, if you break down yeah. religion, it's very simple. It's not as complicated as people like to think it is. Right. Yeah, and I think, honestly, like, ego might play a big role in religion. Like, everybody wants people to believe what they believe. Right, and I think everyone has their own interpretation. Everyone who is religious will tell you they have their own interpretations of what religion is, right? There's yeah. no one, like, sect of religion that is completely pure, you know what I mean? I mean, even if like you were to argue with me, like, oh, like there is like, you know, Islamic fundamentalists, I would disagree with you. I would say that, I mean, I have personally not done a lot of research into this. I've done uh, some research, but like, I mean, I think jihad is something that is very like, you can interpret it in a variety of ways, right? Mm. In my opinion. Um, and I think, and you can comment on this after I'm done. The, one of the ways I think you can interpret it is like, I know it's like jihad is supposed to describe this like it's like you are like it's like fighting a battle I think is like what I interpreted it as and like I feel like what the prophet Muhammad meant when he said that was he meant like fighting battles within yourself is like one way that jihad yeah honestly can be fought, that's right? the thing like I mean if we're gonna talk about like that's like the same thing with like these Islamic extremists they're not they don't believe in real Islam. They literally says, I, like, I don't even, like, I don't even know where to begin with this. Like, you know, my mom's pretty religious, but she's Sunni, right? And, like, yeah. we consider Sunni, like, the most pure, like, you know, form of Islam, but it's also mm -hmm. one of the oldest, and it's also the majority. Like, right. you know, most people follow that. And then there's Shia, and then there's, like, a couple others, right? Um, and it's interesting because, like, I don't know, like, I think people don't understand Islam because I, I don't agree with you one hundred percent. You know, like yeah, Islam is not that different from Christianity or Judaism, like Agreed. at all. You know, like for me, example, I don't even pray. It's all about just like the belief system. You know, like and at the end of the day, each of these belief systems at the core is like have good morals. You know have good judgment exactly you know, like don't backbite don't do this and everybody does that shit right so literally nobody is religion. i mean you think about you religion know? religion is built on fundamental values right and i think all religions christianity hinduism buddhism islam they're all built on the same values of like listen don't lie don't cheat don't steal like very basic moral principles that i think most human beings already have it's just like there are different interpretations of like what happens after death and like religion in a lot of ways is kind of a way to answer existential questions. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's like all, human beings since the beginning of time, I know we're, Jesus, we're getting philosophical human <laughs> being. This is not what I wanted to do, but okay, let's do it. Um, I mean, since the beginning of time, like human beings have always wanted answers to questions that honestly none of us can answer you know like what happens after we die what happened like how do we die like why do we die all of these things and religion is sort of meant to be like a guidebook for that right in a lot of ways where it's like okay here is what happens like this is this is the rules and it's like oh, if I follow these rules, then I know this will happen to me. And I know this will happen because human beings are very linear thinkers. We're not people that like to be like, I'm we scared. hate the unknown. We fucking, I hate being scared. I'm like, dude, I want to know exactly what's happening next. I'm a very structured person. And I feel like no matter, even if you aren't structured, like human beings just naturally are very like straight. Like we want to know like what's happening next, what's happening next. And when you get to death, it's like, 
what the fuck? Like, I have no clue. Like, no one has any idea. But religion can give you some semblance of an idea of what happens after death. And I feel like that's what it's a safety net for them. Exactly. Exactly. In a lot of ways, it's that like, that's what I believe religion is, is it's, it's a way to help people answer existential questions. And whether you subscribe to any particular religion, it's just a different interpretation of the same moral values. Right. I mean, that's Mm -hmm. my opinion, but, and like different people have their own opinions, right? Like, I mean, my mom heard that she'd slap me and she'd be like, what is wrong with you? Like, I believe religion is this. And honestly, everyone's entitled to their own opinion about religion. I'm not here trying to say like, oh my God, like you have to be like this religion or believe this. It's like, no, I don't care when you believe (laughs) what you believe. It's like, we're all living on this planet. I mean, my, (laughs) I personally am like, I've always been very confused about religion. I've always thought, oh, religion's too complicated for me. I'm too stupid. I'm not going to understand. But like the more and more I think about it, it's like, huh. Like, I feel like there is a lot that we can learn from religion, from, from the values. And I'm not even, and like, I'm talking all religions. We can learn a lot from all religions. I think there are specific things that every religion does well. I think there are things that every religion that, and I think every religion has something, I'm not going to say I disagree with all religions. I mean, I'd say that there are things that every religion does that I, that, that every religion I've been exposed to does that I disagree with. And it's like, it's about finding, like, I feel like it's about finding your own moral code and, like, following that in some instances. But I, I went on a fucking tangent. Um, right, right. No, I completely agree with you. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about Kashmir because we did not touch on that. We touched on yes. literally every single country. <laughs> we, we really did talk about all the religions. I'm interested to hear your perspective on religion, though, like, before we get into the whole Kashmir um, thing. Yeah. Tell me. What's I up? mean, honestly, like... I think people pretend to be religious, like kind of like what I was saying earlier, like, you know, like, why do you think that core of Islam is like, don't backbite, you know, don't lie, don't, you know, do people dirty. And literally, I'm yet to meet somebody who's not doing someone dirty, you know, and it's like, people like hide behind religion, they think like, oh, if I just like pray hard enough, if I just you know, ask for God's forgiveness, and I, okay, sure, like, I, I think praying is a really spiritual thing, and, like, obviously, like, my parents would disagree with me on this, right, like, and they will say, like, no, baby, don't <laughs> yeah, say Yeah, same with my parents, and my, well, my mom in particular, yeah. You know, they're like, don't say that, that's not how we praise you, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm allowed to question, like, you know, and true. so, it just feels like that, like, I literally, I call my parents on the shit all the time, I'm like, dude, why are you even backbiting, like, it's not helping you, like, you want to go to heaven, just stop talking about them, <laughs> like, you know? Okay, this is something I've just, like, personally just thought of right now, do um, Muslims believe in heaven and hell? Is that, like, something yeah, you believe in? Yeah, 100%, oh, okay. even the devil, dude, Interesting. if you look at our book, like, the stories, it's literally- Is it very similar to Christianity? It's literally the Bible, and I don't understand, and maybe, like, there's no Prophet Muhammad, but- I think that, is that the it, only main difference, is Prophet Muhammad? That's, like, one of the main ones, because we also yeah. have, um, we have a lot of the other ones in, uh, we have Gabriel, we have, um, what do you call him, Noah, we call him, I think, New. We, you call him, I'm not- Okay, well, I just meant... My family's not even Christian, bro. (laughs) I I meant meant Christian. And it's just, like, different, like, it's just a different language. Like, if you look at Arabic to... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was just going to say, like, I mean, between, like, polytheistic and monotheistic religions, that's a whole completely different ballgame. Like, Hinduism, or not Hinduism, but uh, Islam and Christianity are both monotheistic religions, right? Christians believe in Jesus. Muslims believe in Allah. Like, that's, like, you know, that is... A monotheistic religion is like I feel like in some ways is like easier to understand. For like Hindus, bro, there's like seventy <laughs> different gods. I like have no clue sometimes. My mom will be like, "Oh, there's Parvati, there's Lakshmi, there's this, there's that, there's that." I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" Like, I Jesus, like there is there is so many different gods. I'm like, wait, 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 let me get a pen. Let me get yeah, a pen. Yeah, it's crazy, <laughs> and it's like, what? Like the and it's insane, bro. And it's yeah. just like I feel like Hinduism is like it's interesting because it's one of those religions where like each God kind of stands for like a different moral principle. You know what I mean? It's like this God, you know, believes in this. Like when we do, I'll think of like one example. I think it's Saraswati Puja where basically Saraswati is like the goddess of like knowledge and education. And essentially like what that is, is like 
every, I remember we used to do this every year. My mom would be like, bring down, bring down your textbooks or like bring down your books. And she would like go and like bless the textbooks and like, you know, pray that we all, you know, do well in school and all this stuff. And it's just like, I feel like every, and like the, what I'm trying to say through that is like, I feel like every Hindu God is kind of represents like their own various moral principles. And like, there's stories about each Hindu God. This is why I think like Hinduism is so complicated to understand because there's, there's literally 80, 90 different gods. And each of them has their own like set of stories. It's almost like each of them has their own little mini Bible. And it's like all those Bibles combined together is Hinduism, right? And obviously Hinduism has like the Bhagavad Gita and all of that, which I mean, I feel like is like the quote unquote, like moral code for Hinduism, where it's more so again, saying the same stuff that Islam says, like, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't do anything stupid, blah, blah, blah. But like, I mean, at the end of the day, like, we all have lied before. <laughs> exactly. We, we all have the made point, mistakes. The point, like, like the point of Islam, at least, like, you know, I'm yeah. only speaking to like what I know is just that everybody's a sinner. It's just a matter of like, you know, who's going to do the things that make you less of a sinner. Like, yeah. are you going to pray? Are you going to, you know, beg forgiveness? Are you going to like try to be better? And it's just like, it's honestly just like a moral code, but something you, sh you should obviously like still set for yourself. And like, but I do agree, like, to a certain extent that being in some type of religion for a child, at least in the early years, gives them like some sort of structure. But then after that, I think there should be a little more like I think people take religion way too seriously, personally. I agree. Like, I, I agree with that 100%. You know, but I think in those early years, and it doesn't even have to be religion, it should just be some sort of moral teaching. Because there are kids nowadays that this is where murderers come from, this is where rapists come from, is because they don't have that, you know, correct upbringing. And honestly, that's obviously not the only reason. There's also, like, mental yeah, health. And I mean, so but, there's several. <laughs> but I think, like, some of that does come from that, you know, like, upbringing. And I mean, that goes back to that whole thing we were talking about earlier, right? Where it's like, oh, like religion provides structure. And that's like a lot of, that's like a lot of times like what people are looking for within society. It's like people are looking for structure. Mm -hmm. And religion is kind of provides that, that backbone for a lot of people, you know, yeah. in, like, in a chaotic, in an ever changing chaotic world, religion is like a thing you can depend on. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That's an interesting thing. But we can talk about the other thing you want to talk about. Let's, let's talk about Kashmir. And I, I kinda wanna I kinda wanna start with this one a little bit and tell Go. you a little bit of what I know of the political. Boom. Um, so obviously like there have been so many different conflicts in this area. And even though in like two thousand three there was like a ceasefire or whatever, there's still many conflicts that happen and it's like an armed area, you know, like and you know, recently there's been a lot of and then in the 90s, there was, like, Islamic, um, like, militant groups or whatever. And, like, to be fair, like, you know, a lot of what people say is that, you know, Pakistan was funding these groups um, because they didn't want India to, like, you know, go, like, past that set or, like, border, you know, mm -hmm. and, like, into, like, the um, Pakistani. Do you want to, like, explain real quick, like, what Kashmir is to people? Because, like, I feel like... Oh, people don't oh right, right. I yeah. totally forgot. I was talking about it. Well, I mean, okay, so Kashmir is, like, a disputed area on along the India and Pakistan border towards the north. And actually, I just found out, I didn't know about this before, part of Kashmir is actually China's. Like, and the Chinese part is just not disputed. It's just, like, China's, like, it's mine. Like, I'll dominate you, you know? <laughs> um, but, like, um, so there's that. And... It's been disputed pretty much since the partition in the 1940s. And there's, the people there are tired. And I think the world is tired of seeing just so much conflict in that area. Because really, at the end of the day, it's the civilians that suffer. And so, yeah, that's all about Kashmir. But I wanted to, yeah, but yeah, like earlier I was talking about, um, so one of the earliest um conflicts that i know of was i think in 1947 and it was in jammu and kashmir which is the indian part of mm -hmm. kashmir and i think they expelled and killed a lot of muslims and that was still pretty early like close to the partition time so i think it was like 
you know, fresh wounds that were kind of being opened. It was just like another conflict happening and it was really hard for people. Um, and that's one that people don't really talk about in age. Like, because it was, they kind of consider, oh, like it was just around the time of the partition. It was just added to all of that. But Kashmir was like a whole different area you have to realize, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and then w the one that most people know about, which is like, I think in the 1990s, or I think it was 1990, um, which was, you know, the Islamic militant groups that were forcing, you know, the Kashmiri pundits who were like, I think they're Hindu. I think they're Hindu. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I think um, they are. They're forcing them to convert and like, you know, um, threatening them to uh like if they didn't convert they would they would have to leave and i think uh during that time a lot of hindus left that area and they started you know living in refugee camps in different parts in different um states within india like they were escaping because they were just mm -hmm. too scared for their lives um and it's just it's just devastating because it's like why can't we and to be fair i think both parties would you know, go out of their way and try to take over the other parts of Kashmir, you know? But I think, like, at the end of the day, it should really be Kashmir as, like, an independent state that gets to decide what they want to do. But at this point, it's like these people are so tired. Are they even going to be able to govern themselves? Yeah, you know? I feel like it's the situation is, like, so far gone at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just, like there's just already been years and years of like tension and fighting. And I think there was something also recently, I believe, I think there was a, a, a Bollywood movie made about it, uh, 2016. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. There was also, yeah. So there was, I believe there were strikes there as well. And there was like the whole Indian operation to like, I, I'm blanking on like what exactly it was, but there was, I believe there was like, again, more Pakistan India tension on the border um and there was like <laughs> the movie was super biased it was really funny it was like it was basically just about like india army officers like destroying the shit out of pakistani people it was really funny um how biased it was uh you know um and i, I feel like that's also another thing which is crazy it's just like the way that it's interpreted in media i mean obviously i don't think pakistan necessarily has um like a bollywood equivalent you know what i mean like i feel uh like me, Lollywood. Uh, okay, never mind. Sorry. Explain. Okay, well, we're 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 in the making. Okay, but you know, there's actually some Pakistani movies that I would recommend. Um, cool. If you if you want to watch But I Had Love or um, Oh man, Superstar is pretty good actually. Okay, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Lollywood. You know, that's it, that's cool. But like Pakistan, like more than just like the media aspect, we've always been so big on music and like musical instruments and like. Right. We have, you know, India has their Coke studio, Pakistan has their Coke studio. Like, I'm telling you, they're always competing. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude, all the time, bro. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Even the cricket matches. Like, my parents would tell me stories about, like, how if, like, India lost, like, there would be riots in the street just everywhere. And, yeah. <laughs> and they were just, like, it was crazy. It's just, like, I, I mean, cricket matches for them, like, India, Pakistan was, like, bigger than the Super Bowl for me. Like, it was, it was insane. Like, <laughs> I was just, like, yeah. damn. It would be kind of cool to be a part of that. No lie, as a sports fan. But <laughs> no, I don't think you want to be a part of that. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think it'd be fun. Um, yeah. I think my dad's listening to the podcast outside. He's laughing. I can hear him. That's He's funny. Like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah. So hi, dad. Dad, get out. I can hear you. <laughs> yeah, he's quiet now. Yeah, but you'll hear him a little snigger laugh later. He'll be like, <laughs> so. Um, yeah. But that's yeah. the gist of Kashmir. I mean, I don't really think we have to talk about it too much. So it's like, yeah, I mean, I think the point that we we're trying to get out of it was just like, there is divide on the border. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, um what else oh i want to talk about uh just something a little fun for this next one uh i want to talk about indian matchmaking <laughs> oh oh and also yeah hold up you start before, talking before before the 
what's up? I'm getting a knock on the door, so you start talking about that, okay? okay? Cool. All right. So for those of you who don't know what uh, what Indian matchmaking is, it's it's this uh, it's this um, it's this how do I explain it? It's this Hollywooded version of what Bollywood marriages should look like. Okay, it's a very it's very interesting. Um, it's and it's been met with a lot of criticism from the Indian community, I would say in particular, uh, about colorism and about, um, what are the other things? Like, it's just other things, like, I, and the way it's just like, you know, it feels like they've basically just created an Indian version of The Bachelor. Like, it's, <laughs> is how Indian matchmaking looks. Um, but I wanted to get your thoughts on, like, what Indian matchmaking is and, like, the controversy behind it and all that, so. Do you start? Um, honestly, I thought that it was really, I, I mean, personally, I don't think it's Indian matchmaking's fault because I think a lot of the issues in the show in terms of like, you know, people looking for partners that were yeah. lighter. Oh yeah, and more context. It was, uh, the show was uh, basically about arranged marriage. So it's about, right, right. Um, it's about this like Indian matchmaker. Uh, they're like professional matchmakers in India who like set up, uh, different guys with uh, with different girls, and haha, ha, dad, so funny. Um, <laughs> set up different guys with different girls, and and then um, and you know it's basically like an arranged thing. So like the the matchmaker is like the middleman, and there's like a whole process too. And it's like it's kind of like what I liked about it was like it it does give like the wider American audience kind of like a look into what. Indian culture is in some way you know what I mean right yeah but I also think it was like a little bit there there is problems with it I'm not saying that there wasn't I and I think and uh for the the viewers that don't know there there was like a big controversy behind Indian matchmaking and I think one of the main controversies behind it was uh this whole idea that there was like colorism involved like you know so like basically like what colorism is is like this whole idea of like uh, it's sort of like anti-blackness where it's like if you are dark like you're looked down upon you know like the darker you shade you are of skin color you're looked down upon and the lighter you are the more like of a match quote-unquote that is and so I, I think there was several um, instances on the show where either I think the matchmaker herself said like oh like the girl needs to be a little more fair or like the guys talking to the matchmaker like the girls talking to the matchmaker being like the guy needs to be more fair stuff like that so that's basically the main gist of like what people had an issue with yeah exactly like I was going to talk about that as well just um you know the fact that people are requesting you know people from a certain cast or like people with a certain degree the cast system is like a whole separate thing right it's uh yeah 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 but I mean it's still included in the show yeah for sure um and you know, they want somebody who's, like, lighter, things like that, or, like, in a certain age range, height. It was just very, like, like superficial, it seemed like, but the truth is, like, people do try to find, like, the... I mean, that's what it's like in, in India. I don't know about Pakistan, but that's what it's like in India. I mean, I mean, to be fair, like, in Pakistan, I don't think there's matchmakers as much as there is just you know family friends and it's like oh like you know will you marry my daughter or something and that's yeah. a lot of that like um dude I literally every time I go to Pakistan they're like will you take my son for your daughter like it's not even yeah. just family friends it's so weird like I was yeah. like I'm literally like at that time I think I was like 16 I was like bro what I literally <laughs> do I mean, somebody matches at 16 well dude I think it was like an eventual match type of, they, they mm. just didn't talk about this shit. And it's so weird because it's like the two people involved, like literally do not care yeah. for each other at all. I, I mean, I remember um, my, when last time I went to India, this was like probably four years ago now. Like my brother was, uh, gosh, he was like 22, 23. And like, there were people that like, and we went to a wedding in India and there were like people that were coming up to my parents being like, so... <laughs> graduated college huh <laughs> it's like okay bro it's like 23 yeah, that's that the marriageable card. age like I that green card yeah so that was pretty weird I know he was pretty shocked by that he was like what like <laughs> marriage proposals already <laughs> yeah like 
<laughs> that's a you know that's a shout out to both of you guys by the way if you're listening to this I don't know if they got this far but um <laughs> but uh yeah so you know there was a whole that was that was really funny though I remember I clowned him for that I was like oh you're getting proposals from you know this that other and it's cool I mean like what I liked about Indian matchmaking was like you have to take it for what it is in some instances you know you can't take the show literally you can't be like oh this is what Indian marriages are like all the time all day every day right like that's not that's not necessarily what like Indian marriages are right there are a lot of Indian love marriages okay <laughs> not every Indian marriage is, is arranged I you know I know of many Indian love marriages I know many arranged marriages but arranged marriage is a thing that happens in India and like the controversy behind like all like they, the colorist stuff that shit that happens in India and the show just happened to document it so like I wouldn't necessarily blame the show like would you yeah. want to edit that out and then it come out later like oh they edited out colorist remarks like I mean I think it's a lose-lose no matter what I mean yeah the people look like you know they look kind of sucky being like oh like I want fairer guys or like fairer girls but like it is what it is. <laughs> like, also, at the end of the day, it was just a form of entertainment. Watch it or not. That too. Watch it or not. It's like, what was your favorite, though? Dude, I actually kind of like Nadia, but that's basic as fuck. Uh, no, I think everyone liked her. Even, like, no, my family, we were all very pro-Nadia. Yeah. No, she's just such a sweetie. Like, I think she really deserved to, like, find somebody nice. Like, yeah. So, for those of you who haven't watched the show, you should watch the show. It's, it's pretty good. Um, I know there are a lot of like, there's a lot of hate against it, especially from the South Asian community. But I, my recommendation is if you're, if you're going to watch the show, you, you take it for what it is, take it for entertainment. Don't watch it literally. Don't expect to learn new things, whatever, you know, just, just watch it like you would watch The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's fun TV. It's entertaining. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And just, just a little segue to like, end uh-huh. this convo or whatever. Yeah, go um, for it. I remember before I deleted the TikTok, I saw this one TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this one TikTok. Because, like, you know, I, I ended up on brown TikTok somehow. Dude, I think we, I think TikTok is definitely, you know, I think we all ended up on brown TikTok. I'm very I don't know deep. how. I, like, dug myself in a very deep rabbit hole where, like, I was so deep into brown TikTok that, like, some of Mexican TikTok started invading Indian TikTok. And, and it then was, I like, got it was really TikTok. bad. And then I started getting, like, a top, like, um what is it topics from like you know like actual india india so it was like whoa like this is you know i'm a i'm an nri as they call me oh my god you know and every every <laughs> like every podcast. all my relatives make and like and this is a thing too like for those of you who don't know like when you go back to india or like when you go back to pakistan or wherever it's like when you go back like people think that you're so white like <laughs> like oh my god yeah. these guys are like in my language it's um it's like they're uh bala that's like well that's what they say it basically means like oh they're God. super white like um and it's just like it's really funny um okay hold up hold up let me tell yeah. you about the tiktok okay? yeah go for it so now you made me think of another one because hey, it's tell funny. me about I, all your TikToks. i ended up i ended up on fox on tiktok and <laughs> i watched this i watched this one it was like describing all of the fox on tiktoks and like it was basically just like the background is like the have you heard that song oh look at you <laughs> pulling up little vocals okay oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. no 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 I, I love singing but um that wasn't even that good but I, I just like it was so funny to me do, you, like, do a little performance for the show bro oh god no i don't even know the proper words to that song but maybe yeah, sometimes sing a little bollywood i don't know maybe i can guest star on another pot another episode and then another I'll episode do a little do a little solo like, act. That'd, be, like, that'd be kind of dope oh <laughs> you could sing the intro That'd be kind of sick. That would be really cool. Okay, but anyway, listen, listen. The the topic that we didn't talk about was Hindu Muslim marriages, and so ooh, that was on there. I forgot to say something about. <laughs> listen, listen. Yeah. The TikTok that I saw was like the sexual tension between the Indian and Pakistanis in the room, and it was so funny. Like it's so true. <laughs> it's kind of true though, bro. For sure, I you know like it's so weird. I met so many like Indian guys too. They're like always going to date a Pakistani girl. And I was like, okay, like, is that just on your, like... <laughs> it's like a bucket like, list. Like, all right, fuck it. I gotta do it. <laughs> like, gotta do it for the culture. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. But, so, but, but, like, yeah, what do you think about um, Hindu Muslim marriages? What's your thought on it? They happen. They're more common in India. Um, I mean, I yes, they do happen. And stuff, like, mm-hmm. um, if you take, like, Saif Ali Khan, I think his wife converted to Islam. 
his second okay. wife. Um, Interesting. Okay. Karina. Yeah, I think he's married to Karina now. But um, he's married to Karina yeah, things Kapoor. Things like that. And you know, Shah Rukh Khan. I think so. He, his wife never converted. She's Hindu, but it's really cool. Yeah. Um, my mom, like, you know, told me about this because she was looking into it. Basically, like, the top half of their house is like, you know, for praying, like, in Islamic way, and the bottom half is like a temple like and so the kids can just go wherever and it's like a nice balance between the two nice. you know? so I think are they are they both like are they are they religious i feel like shark Khan isn't is he religious I pretty don't know religious if... but he doesn't force it on his children i think i think he lets them choose interesting because i was watching it uh he did an interview with uh with letterman um gosh this is probably like a year or so ago it was really it's a really nice interview um and he basically he like talks about a lot about his like personal life and all that so you could definitely watch that interview but he doesn't really mention anything about religion i mean i know like that's a very big big deal in india it's like oh shark khan like muslim but like and like gari khan is known to be hindu but it's like that's interesting he i've never really heard him talk on the issue yeah. of like the hindu muslim marriage even though that is one of the it's more prevalent tough, ones though, within honestly, india like it's so uncommon like it's common but i think it's also uncommon like yeah. especially in america like oh in america I mean, it's i mean i feel like in america it's very looked down upon in a lot of ways well yeah um, in some i mean like in some ways like i don't know if that's just a bay thing or like what but yeah. <laughs> um but yeah i mean it's it's very like it's very different i mean if you like because i feel like i don't know if like muslims have their own perspective in terms of like oh like what do hindus think about like like don't, like when we like i don't know what muslims like what muslim parents think like when they're like when so, their you know daughter brings home a hindu guy or whatever but like i know like for my household it's like oh like you know you have to convert like that's a big thing like and like, from a lot of people that i've talked to too it's like oh like you have to convert like that's the rule and it's like, I don't necessarily know if that myth is true or it's like false. Well, like, it is true for some people, but it's also not like a set in stone type thing. I think there's obviously more progressive families that are more open to something like that. And for sure. when, but you know what's crazy though? I think what? my mom would rather I bring home a white guy than an Indian guy. Like that's <laughs> just like, like I think that's just I think that's the funny part too. Like yeah, it's like emphasizes the hate between these two like countries. dude i mean that's crazy but like do you do you like back to like the i mean back to like what we were talking about do, do you see it like in the states like with uh, within our generation like do you see do you see hate um i think it's our like, division yeah definitely and i think it's it doesn't come out in like the same ways like okay like it comes out with little things like okay we're all brown but when you say that you're also discounting like all of these different like you know practices and religions and you know languages and yes we're all brown but we're not all indian and we're not all like hindu and we're not all you know it's yeah like, i mean i feel like what you're trying to say is like when people say like oh we're all brown they like assume hindu indian mm -hmm. you know north indian mostly right like that's yeah that's what is assumed but like in reality there's so much more to to south asia than just you know the the, the normative narrative exactly yeah yeah that's interesting i've never really thought about it that way it's like oh maybe i shouldn't say like we're all brown dude we're good i mean you could say it to me but also i know i, I don't, I don't yeah <laughs> we're homies it doesn't matter <laughs> but um but no that's that's a really like interesting is there like so you're saying it's more like subtle than like you know or like discount and it may not even be like conscious you know what i mean like i mean I'm consciously it, it thinking about that to, it kind of comes down to why do i know everything there is to know about your holidays and you know nothing about eid you know like oh, that's true like it's just like if you expect people to understand you because you're the majority like you have to be willing to understand them, you know? Interesting. And another thing, like, India is a secular state. Like, what the what the fuck is going on with all of these minorities there? They should be so welcoming, you know? But it's, yeah. like, like... I don't... It's weird, because, I mean, obviously, like, there's the whole stuff with, like, Modi now, you know? And it's, like, yeah. you know, him being, like, kind of more of, like, you know, part of BJP and, like, this Hindu nationalist. It's, like, it's very much, like, these are my boys. Like, I don't want anybody else kind of thing. And it's, 
it's very much like relegating and like taking away from like you know the unity he's instead of unifying the country he's more so dividing people and yeah. it's weird you know what i find the most ironic i wanted to talk about this i think there's so many people there are so many like uncles and aunties <laughs> today that are like i hate trump i hate trump go biden but they're like, they're like I Modi. love Modi. Modi! <laughs> it's like, <laughs> dude, what? <laughs> like, those two things don't make sense in the same sentence. It's like, you're anti the guy that you're pro. It's like... Exactly. It's like hypocrisy. It's so point. weird. It's it's so weird. I mean, I mean, I, I have, I mean, I've looked a little bit into like the, I mean, the Indian elections happened in what, 2018. I looked into like, you know, the guy that was running against Modi is named Rahul Gandhi. Um, and like, I've looked into like what Congress Party, Congress Party, for those of you who don't know, in India is like a, this like family dominated type thing, right? It was, you know, first it was Jawaharlal Nehru, and then Indira Gandhi, and then Rajiv Gandhi. And then, you know, so it's, it's been like, a, it's like the Kennedys of India. Like, that's what the Gandhis are. Or like, nepotism. There's a lot of nepotism. A lovely Indian topic. <laughs> there is a lot of like nepotism within, um, what's it called within like the Congress party in India. And so that's who Modi was running against. And like, I feel like there was like a little thing where it was like, Oh, Modi's the better of the two evils kind of like what we're seeing here in 2020. But also it's like, dude, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's just, I find that sentence to be so ironic that people are like, I am mm-hmm. pro or I'm anti-Trump, but I'm pro Modi. It's like, what? Because <laughs> I feel like, I don't know, and maybe this might be like a thing. Do like most, like, do a lot of South Asian people, and I'm talking like Indian people in particular, because I'm talking about Modi, like, do they not just like give that much of a shit about American politics? <laughs> I mean, the thing about American politics is it's like the whole world is watching. You know, yeah. like, it's like, I was actually like learning about this thing. It's like, you can name like the American president. But how many world leaders can you name? You know, like everybody Ooh. has their eyes on America. Mm-hmm. Like we're not paying attention to the fucking Costa Rican elections. Yeah. I mean, no offense to Costa Rica. It's just people don't pay attention to them. Yeah. They're a smaller nation. I mean, America, whether you like it or not. Powerful. Like I think at the end of the day, it comes down to power. Like we were talking earlier about how in society there are winners and losers and that's just what's happening and it's always going to happen yeah that's crazy to me though that it's just like i guess some people just take the l (laughs) unfortunately um which is which is interesting let me see if there's one more thing i wanted to talk about i think we did cut oh here's another one just the last little final thing just real quick what do you think about like south asians in the united states compared to like you know because i know you've lived kind of both both you know because you grew up in Pakistan. In America are literally disgusting <laughs> Stop. you can't be saying these things bro i'm honest you know me i'm brutally honest they jesus can they can take it oh my gosh do you realize most of my audience is South? <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna be mad not everybody not everybody but i do think there's like okay i mean finish your question first and I'll oh no i was just like compare like because you've grown up in in Pakistan, you spent some time there when you were a kid. Um, but compare your, like, compare, like, what it was like being, like, and I, and I think you've been surrounded by South Asians in, like, both parts of your life, right? Like, where you, whether you grew up here, whether you grew up there. So, like, compare, like, what it was like in terms of just, like, dynamics, in terms of just, like, what people, like, do and, like, act and all that. Yeah. Honestly, I think American South Asians have, like, a huge identity crisis and like I felt that at one mm-hmm. point in my life like when I moved here I think but we I, yeah I, I did as well I mean I, I felt it yeah. yeah yeah but I really feel like connected to my culture but it's like you know when you for example like when you have a cultural club or something like that like it's right. not enough to be like have you seen three idiots you know <laughs> <laughs> Or like, yo, 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 come out to Holy. We throw powder at each other. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, that's not enough. Like, you don't know anything about your culture. And right. you're not entirely to blame. But then, like, when I come in here and I'm a brown ass person, like, I probably smelled like curry in middle school. Like, you know, I think, I think we all did to some extent. <laughs> but like, I'm so like in tune with my culture and I feel like I know so much. And like, great. 
I think I think a lot of people would be envious of that, to be honest. But I think it's it's something a lot of people struggle with because right, yeah, it's not cool to do that. You know what I mean? It's not like cool to be like, mm-hmm. oh, like I'm gonna go, you know, read the Bhagavad Gita and like learn about yeah, Hindu religious yeah. myths and like do all that. What's cool is like, oh yeah, dude, like I, I fucks with the non bread and the chai tea, bro. But like, <laughs> the other shit in my culture, yeah. like yeah, we we it's don't like we don't talk about that. Level shit and it's like do you know like the story of your people do you understand because half the people like half the south asians i know like if i'm being honest they're like they don't understand that they're really trying to be white and it's like why 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 Why? can't you be both why do you just have to be one thing yeah and i think that's something like i think everybody has their own process with that particularly if you're south asian and I think we're at the age, right? We're like 20, 19, 20, where it's like things are starting to take a corner. You know, things are starting to change. And it's like, okay, I'm growing older. I need to like better understand this. And like, I'm guilty of it too. Like, I'm not saying, oh yeah, dude, like I was culturally woke my whole life. Like, you know, I'm brown as hell. <laughs> I'm still not. Like, <laughs> like I get called whitewashed by my friends all the time. And like my parents too. <laughs> they're like, dude, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. they're like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> well, you're willing to have a conversation. This is what I'm saying. Like, they don't even want to know. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't even yeah. want to know where they come from. And it's like, I don't, obviously people have different reasons for things. And I feel like people rationalize things differently in their head. It's an individual case by case basis, obviously. But I think it's interesting with like South Asians here in the United States, because I mean, we grew up very differently. Like, I, I mean, I'm saying we like in terms of just like, I'm, I presume you grew up in the Bay for like a good majority of your life. So I'll say you too, but it's well, like really like four years, four <laughs> years. Okay. I mean, I spent fucking 17, Forever. but, <laughs> but, um, Forever. but, uh, but yeah, no, I mean like growing up in the Bay area, like is so different. And like, this is like another thing, like I want to talk about, I mean, Indians in the, in the United States and South Asians in the United States are so spread out, right? We're not necessarily, there's not, south asians like in just one part it's not like oh every south asian lives in edison new jersey like that's just not how it works you know it's like okay south asians are like in the bay they're in new york new jersey you know but they're everywhere and like what i found out like doing some research was when the heart seller act was signed in the 1960s um basically like they allowed educated south asian americans in the country to do like these but basically they were allowed in this country to do like Edu- to do white collar jobs that other people didn't want you know what i mean so it's like that's why you'll see south asians in hoover alabama in tuscaloosa in you know fucking plano texas in all of these random in places Utah. in what in yeah, kansas in topeka kansas like everywhere you'll see brown families everywhere and that's why we're so spread out and there's not like one central like there's not really big communities of us. I, mean, I would say the Bay and probably New York, New Jersey are the two biggest. There's also yeah. two in like Which Texas was, as well. But I was saying the Bronx, but I think I meant Queens. I think Queens has a lot of brown people, right? Queens, yeah. Queens too. I think Queens and then New Jersey as well. New Jersey's hella brown. And bro. Chicago, dude, Chicago has a lot of brown people. Yeah, too. I mean, the sub, it's all burbs too. They all love to hang out in the burbs. I'm telling you, bro. There's something about brown yeah. people in the suburbs. South Bay, all suburbs, mostly brown. <laughs> you don't like, yeah. But I mean, I think it's it's different because we grew up in one of these like metropolitan areas, which is like a big center of for like brown people, and it's very different growing up that way versus growing up as you know one brown family in fucking Topeka, Kansas. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you grow up as like the only brown family in Kansas. I feel like to a certain extent, you're like, oh. Like <laughs> I am different than everyone else. Like, right? Yeah, it's like it's a whole it's a whole different it's narrative. Tough. It's so tough. But like with us, it's like, dude, oh yeah, bro. There's like five of us in the same neighborhood, like on the same block, and it's like, oh, at my high school, it's sixty five percent Asian, forty percent of which is South Asian. Like you know, like it's you know what I mean? It's like we're constantly surrounded by these people, and I think to a certain extent that's a good thing because like we were allowed to kind of like go through similar experiences with like cultural identity shifts and all of these things together, you know? And like we had each other, but at like the same, and like we were also like able to have these cultural clubs, these like, you know, able to have like each other in some sense. I mean, I think 
when you meet someone and they have your same skin tone, there is a sense of familiarity. That's just a theory I have. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. But I think like having that like definitely like made things a lot easier for us or for me. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, I think I never felt like super left out in high school, but when I went to college, that was like a whole different set. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, whole I different mean, Nude, oh my god, let me finish. Go for it, sorry. <laughs> your, your food, your food. Um, it was a whole different set of Indians that I was dealing with because there was like two other Bakistanis on campus, you know? And like, it, it just, it's sad to me to see that to them I wasn't like a familiar face. I was like not even, you know, like it, it's a sad thing, you know, because we're not different. And in fact, like, if I would have walk up, walked into that club, I bet I could teach them more about their culture than they know. You know, that's like so. <laughs> that's probably true. I yeah. mean, it's sad, but like there, that is a thing that happens, right? There is a lot of whitewashed Indian people. Um, and like, there's a lot of people that want to escape that culture. And this is another thing that I want to talk about. I feel like to, to a certain extent, I, we've grown up obviously with a lot of, or I've grown up with a lot of Indian people near me. And I think of a lot of Indian people, like Indian parents tend to be very strict and very demanding and very authoritative. You know what I mean? And a lot of times kids want to rebel against that, you know, bless you. Um, <laughs> kids want to rebel against that. You know, they're like, I don't want to be, a, I don't want to be like that. I want to be something else. I don't want to be a part of that authoritarian thing that like, you know, I was forced to go to the temple every weekend, you know, I was this and that. And like, I mean, I think that's just, uh, that's my perspective on the whole thing. I, I think that's to some degree why Indian kids do tend to like drift from the culture when they get older, but I'm interested to see like what your thoughts are. Um, you no, know, yeah, for sure. Like I agree with what you're saying. Um, I think there's there's also a lot of judgment within Indian circles as well South Asian circles too yeah for sure and like I think we really need to see like a shift to saying South Asian more and I'm glad you're saying it because yeah how many conversations do you have about Nepali people how many conversations do you have about Bangladesh people or Sri Lankan people you know true it's, it's like we need to be talking about these people because just because there's less of them or they're like yeah have a smaller area that they're because like you know muslims and hindus have almost made this whole thing about them but really it's about everybody here it's a bigger issue and it's like it's bigger than just india and pakistan there's yeah so many other countries out there with their own unique cultural traditions and just because you haven't been necessarily exposed to that doesn't mean that there aren't people out there right 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 yeah and I think that is a fantastic way to end this. No, that's a fantastic way to end this. Um, thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me, Anuj. Dude, and this was fun, bro. We should do it yeah. again. We'll do something like a little less serious next time. This was a little- Yeah, feature little, me on another episode. Yeah, we'll do something fun. We'll be like, oh, like, how do we get each other canceled? <laughs> <laughs> so you pull up the first image of our text message chat. It's like, oh, it's over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah but uh thank you so much for coming on i appreciate it i know this was uh this took some time out of your night i know it's friday night i know you probably want to be out partying you know getting lit so oh me yeah no way Are you dude iman me? gets super lit guys dude you're so you're such a liar <laughs> I can't even, dude, that's you like, see that that's actually uh, in her water bottle so she's carrying a water bottle for those of you who are listening to this and uh it's filled with vodka dude new amsterdam <laughs> This is water. She's turning up. She just got progressively drunker on this podcast. Yeah, okay. No, well, she's joking. I'm joking. She's she's very haram. Or very let's, halal. Let's halal, halal. This. Let's end this. Okay, yeah. Um, but thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Okay, thank you. Bye. <laughs>